Hey, freeze! Last week left us on a sort of cliffhanger with Marie and Jordan waking up in bed together with no memory of how they got there. So spoilers, if you haven't seen this week's episode of Generation V, welcome to the Monster Club, as we do get answers, a new villain and another crazy puppet show. But as always, I'm Al, this is the Geek in Review, and just to say thanks for taking the time to choose to watch this video, I really appreciate it, and if you haven't done it already, subscribe to the channel and leave a like if you make it all the way to the end. So this episode picks up pretty much where the last one left off. Andre wakes up in bed with Kate, like Marie and Jordan last week, and like Marie and Jordan, they don't know how they got there after being in Dr. Carosia's home. They're in Dusty at the Invisible TA's house and think they just partied too hard, and they walk in and find Marie and Jordan in bed. Group all realise they don't remember what happened or how they got there, and it's a soup house party as only the boys' universe can deliver and only as I cannot show on YouTube. Marie finds Emma in the pool who's still huge and has to downsize. Jordan and Kate realise they have big blanks in their memory and they catch up on what happened to them at the party on social media. And it's trending as no one knew Emma could size up as well as down, so that's two big hits she's taken in social media since the start of this season. Sam somehow finds them, shows up and apologises for the events at the end of episode 4 and neither Emma or Marie remember them. Look, hey, 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 Sam? That's your name? So their memories have been wiped going back quite a bit and this really plays into Sam seeming to be unstable and it works here, but if you didn't know what had happened before you wouldn't know if Sam was telling the truth or he was genuinely hallucinating at all. But yeah, it was just a little bit convenient how he found them and he didn't explain it because Sam doesn't know what social media is and doesn't have a phone so how did he know how to get there I wonder. He warns them about God, you and the woods and they don't believe him because they don't remember. He says he'll find a way to make them remember before he runs off back to the drive-in. We also learn a little bit more about what Marie can do. Bonkers. Wait, when am I going to get my period again? I mean, next Friday, though. Fucking thank you. Marie. And they realise that they've all lost a few days and think that Rufus the psychic is behind it, as he was at the park. Kate said she had a similar experience to Marie last week with Rufus, and Andre obviously goes after him. Back at Godio, Emma is now a star thanks to the party antics, and she's now in the top 100 students, and really seems to be happier now people don't think she's that much of a freak or she needs to hide her secret. Jordan and Marie find Rufus with Shetty and Marie says that she doesn't trust her but she doesn't know why. They chase him but it's not him, it's a shapeshifter he paid to impersonate him but Andre manages to track him down, obviously pissed off finding out what Kate told him. And before Andre can do anything, Rufus puts the whammy on him and he comes to in a Vought burger later on. Kind of holding up the line there dog. Now, for me, the next scene is the most interesting one. Cardoza warns Shetty it's only a matter of time before they were exposed, and he says that he's working on a virus to control the suit. I am this fucking close to perfecting the virus. So I did post a theory video earlier on in the week about what I thought was going on in the woods, and I said it was possible that they're trying to control the suits through their abilities in order to suppress, remove or transfer them. So it does seem that I am on the right track with this one, but, but what's really interesting is Cardoza is interested in Marie and her abilities, but Shetty says that she's off limits as she's a benefactor protecting her. So, they've never really mentioned that before and I wonder who it is, I'll get to that later on in the video. But anyway, so who's that and why is Cardoza so interested in Marie? Well I think it's probably her blood control and it's probably a way how to spread or expand the anti-V virus. Marie's trying to figure out where she stands with Jordan and Emma finds the jacket from the drive-in where she was with Sam in the previous episode, so she knows that she's been there before. And Sam gets one of the most 
brilliant scenes I think in the boys universe history here he's still having hallucinations and seeing the puppets but as I mentioned last week I wonder who's causing them because I don't think Sam has a mental health issue I think this is another soup manipulating him and the sequence in the tunnel as I said is absolutely crazy with the puppets he's fighting off a team sent to retrieve him and if you notice the puppet Emma glitches like signal interference while this is going on and it is absolutely crazy, especially when you see the context of it in the aftermath. I think it's one of the most best and creative scenes that the boys has ever done. I just hope they don't overuse the puppet thing and they dial it back a little bit because that's been two weeks that we've seen this now. Back at Godview, Marie finds an implant in her neck and goes to tell Kate. And when checking Kate for the same thing, Kate glamours her. So it's Kate who's responsible for the memory wipe at the end of episode 4 and you can see that she's been busy as her eyes get bloody straight away the second she touches Marie, having to glamour Jordan, Emma and Andre as well, so she's really pushing the boundaries of her abilities. Jordan sees Marie exit a room and sees the mark on her neck where the implant was removed but obviously Marie doesn't remember it or anything else that's happened earlier on in the day. Jordan still thinks that it's Rufus who wiped her again and Marie notices that Jordan has an implant too. While they go off to investigate this, Kate goes to see Dean Shetty and it's all getting a bit too much for her. Shetty reassures her that she's doing the right thing for the right reasons but we don't really get any explanations as to why. She goes to see Andre later on and they watch old episodes of Mesmer, the soup we've seen in season 1 who was a child star with his own show. Andre wants to leave the unit and before it can get any further he gets a message saying that they've found Rufus. While this is going on Emma finds Sam realising she's been at the drive-in before, even though she doesn't remember it she does believe him. Back at the university once they corner Rufus he denies any involvement, Emma calls Marie and tells her it's Kate that's made Luke forget he had a brother over and over again just as Andre shows up to deal with Rufus and Kate confesses she's been a secret villain all along. So she's been manipulating all of these characters, some of them potentially for quite a while, in order to hide whatever's going on at the university. But she does show Andre everything that's been erased from his memory, so it's kind of an episode 1 to 4 recap and he calls her a monster before leaving. And that's pretty much where the episode ends. While we got some answers this week mainly clearing up what happened last week, while we got some answers this week mainly clearing up what happened in episode 4 last week and what might be going on in the woods, I think this was the weakest episode of the five so far, as it was just them trying to solve the mystery they were already trying to solve before the end of last week, now with just a few extra steps thrown in. For me, Marie's mysterious benefactor was the most interesting part as I wonder who it is. Maybe Homelander, maybe John Godolphin himself, who hasn't been mentioned in the show yet, but I've got a video coming on John Godolphin in the comics, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. But yeah, I felt like we were just sort of rehashing stuff this week from the first four episodes, which as an audience didn't really push the plot forward any further other than to reveal what Kate was up to. But as always, these are just my thoughts. I'm going to be doing more Gen V theory videos during the week and covering Loki as well. So here's some links to other videos that aren't as popular about them in case you missed them. And I want to hear what you guys think as always. So let me know in the comments below, did you enjoy this episode more than me? And who do you think Marie's benefactor is? As always, my name's Al. Thanks for watching.